Richard, we hear a lot of new drugs, and one of the ex most exciting drugs to wait for to get an approval, hopefully, is venetoclax. There was good data present last year by uh, my colleague, Dr. DiNardo, and other investigators about combining this drug with the cytabine or ASA. At this ASH meeting, we have the combination with low-dose LSC. What's your impression on the drug? Well, I think the, the, uh, this represents a whole new uh, area of therapeutic development, and it really dates back to the late 90s when Korsmeyer described how cells die in response to DNA damage. And we've got agents like venetoclax, which inhibits BCL2, freeing up things which can damage the, uh, allow cell death through uh, cytochrome C release from the mitochondria. And there's other agents like MDM2 inhibitors, which activate P53 and allow cell death through that mechanism, and maybe even MCL1 inhibitors that are a, another limb of the cell death pathway. So this is a, a protein global issue in cancer, and you know, venetoclax is already approved. And, 17 B deleted CLL, which is a very malignant disease, be presumptively because P53 is dysfunctional in those patients. So there is uh, excitement about using venetoclax and AML and, and MDS in our field uh, based on uh, a trial. There was a single agent trial, which we published this year in Cancer Discovery, looking at venetoclax as a single agent. Response rates were not outstanding, 19% CR rate, but it was active. And when you combine it with an agent that is already pushing the cells toward dying, like azacitabine and decitabine, you might be able to get even more bang for your buck. And so uh, Avi launched a trial in which, uh, one trial in which uh, venetoclax was combined with either azacitabine and decitabine at various doses. You're right, the dose escalation part of that trial was presented last year uh, at ASH, and it showed a combined response rate with venetoclax in one of the HMAs of in the 70% range, which is and much higher. And the HBMRD negativity as well, which is after one or two courses. In some, yeah, that hasn't been Untreat fully vetted. Untreated patients, if I'm correct. Correct, What's untreated, it? but if you yeah, give cetamine patients, or ASA, we don't see the rate of MRD. And at this, at this, at this meeting, just to, to, just to finish on this venetoclax issue, very important abstract presented by Andrew Way from Australia, who also presented results of a, of a AbbVie-sponsored trial in which Patients got uh, untreated, but some patients who failed HMA when they had M MDS, untreated AML patients who got low-dose ARIS-C with venetoclax. And the response rate was similarly very high, much higher than expect from low-dose ARIS-C alone. And very early data suggests the one-year survival is impressive. Well, just one more question about the venetoclax. You know, patient, physician and community in the USA are using the drug off-label. As you mentioned, it's approved for 17 patients CLL who failed other therapies. Do you have any concern about tumor lice syndrome or like dose escalation at the well, beginning? Well, the, the good or bad news, depending on how you look at it, in AML, there's been no tumor lysis syndrome in any of the trials I mentioned. Okay. So it's effective, but not as effective as it is in CLL, unfortunately, or fortunately. So we don't have to worry about that particular thing. Although we're still being very cautious, just in case. Excellent. So when I wrap up about the new drugs, other new drugs available, we have uh, the checkpoint inhibitors, we have the guacitabine and others. I want to start with you, Mark. What's your impression about the new drugs? Which one is the most promising and how you follow them? Uh, well, actually, venetoclax to me was quite exciting. Yes. It, it reminds me of rituximab. It seems to work whenever you combine it. But I think there's actually uh, stacking up, coming down the, the pipeline, there's going to be some very interesting drugs. Uh, the resurrection of Mylotarg in the form of uh, um, this uh, Seattle Cytogenetics. Genetics uh, anti-CD33 uh, drug antibody conjugate. Again, the data looks kind of similar to the hypomethylating agents combined with venetoclax, where you go from a 20% response rate up to a 70% response rate. Uh, and uh, your colleague, Dr. Fahdi, will be presenting those data you know, at this meeting. I think that's a particularly exciting time. We can take such an agent and study it in the core binding factor leukemias, in the, in the leukemias where uh, mylotargs seem to have been successful. Um, guadacitabine is a fascinating drug. We're going to make new improved decitabine. We're going to take a CPG island, essentially, in the form of a drug and see if we can get that as a more effective hypomethylated agent. So there are several phase three studies of that um, going on right now. Yes, there's lots of FLT3 inhibitors all stacking up. That's a very crowded field. Uh, we're all delighted that, in fact, uh, we've made the first uh, major leap in that with the Ratify trial but quite literally stacked up our gilteritinib and quizartinib and crinolinib, uh, uh, you know, sort of breathing down their necks. Serafinib is not being developed uh, specifically for AML, but it's sort of on the street, if you will, yes. and is perhaps the most heavily used for three inhibitor right now. Um, 
So uh, I think the, uh, those are the, the drugs that are going to be closest to approval. The other exciting agents, I think, uh, remain still a little bit um, uh, too early, too early right. to judge whether or not yes. anything's. So, uh, Marty, I want to ask you about the myeloclonus.